Hello, Blaine Gray here, Plastic with Beginners, and today we're going to do something a bit different. We're going to do a QA, and a never done this before, but basically we're going to sit down, look at some of the questions that you're asking, some of the biggest questions that keep popping up, basically going to blitz them and we're going to get through them. But it's going to be a lot more chilled, so I'm going to have a, I'm going to sit down with a little beer, I'm going to try and have a bit of a laugh. I'm on the Tiny Rebel here, it's a marshmallow porter, never tried it before, could be hanging, we'll be critiquing this as well. So what we're going to do is just go through the comments on YouTube, see what you're saying. I'm going to go through the ones that keep popping up. So one of the big ones, and we're just going to try and have a bit of a, a learning lesson with a bit of fun. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to look through these comments and just see some you know, ones that keep popping up, see which ones I keep cracking into. Just try and answer a few of your questions. You know, try and get through a few that even you might be unsure of. So, I'm just going to have a quick look now, see what I come up with. Right, I had to show you this one. You couldn't even write this, this is mental. So I had this one comment, it said, Nice video bud, need to wear safety specs, nothing more painful than plastering your pork pies. Your knees are hop ups need some grease too. So I'm guessing my knees were creaky because it definitely want them hop up, I promise. And then right above it, read this. Literally the comment above, you couldn't even write this. Hi, like your helpful informative videos. I plastered my bathroom today and got multi finish in my eye. Very sore and after five different ways of washing it out, I am massaging with tears still streaming from my right eye. How long should I give it before heading to where you need? Well, how long has it been like that, mate? Christ almighty, it sounds evil, doesn't it? Um, I think you should have gone, you know, two hours before. It sounds like you're pulling hard bits of plaster out of your eye. So William Miller, can, if you're watching this video, can you just get back to us and, you know, make sure that you're okay? Let us know how he went on. Hopefully you're still not pulling bits of multi out of your eye. I seriously hope you're all right, mate, because that sounds evil. I actually went a bit deeper before when I was looking into this. Look at it. So this guy got, uh, this is on the plasterisnews.com. This guy got some plaster in his eye. I actually want plaster. It was Weber, so it was render gear. Got some in his eye. Ended up having his eye taken out because it was that bad. Look at the state of that. His eye looks mashed up. Looks like he's been around 10 rounds with Mike Tyson. He looks done in, doesn't he? Mental. Apparently has his eyes. Anyway, yeah, so the answer is always wear safety specs when you're doing any form of plastering. Not good, is it? That is evil. Mmm. This is very nice, by the way. Very nice bit. We're going to keep going. Let's see what else we've got here. Let's do this. They're not all as sensible as the rest. Where's your gloves? Don't have a clue where they are, mate. Must have lost them. I uh, Do you need a stool? Well done. Don't really know what that means, but cheers. Sounds great. Uh, and then another one about sponging. We've done that. Here's one. So thanks for another great video, mate. What do you what do you think about using the big pink rolls of scrim for brown plaster? I've got a few walls where the plaster is dead, and a couple of plasterers have said to bond it mesh instead of taking it all back to brick. No, 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 no. Take it back. If it's drummy, if it's not right, if the wall feels weak and it sounds like it's hollow, get rid of it. Don't cover it back up again with plaster. Don't matter what you put after it, you can't polish it to the turd. It's not going to work. Yeah, don't do that. Literally, hack it off, start again, stop being lazy. <laughs> That's what I recommend anyway. What else have we got? Uh, here we go. Good informative video, but I think we have made plastering hard with all these trowels and speed skimmers. I think he means the speed skims. Beginner's best to use one good quality Marshall Town trial to plaster with, trowel to plaster with. You won't have the time to break in two free trowels. It takes months and days of plastering to get them broken in. It's all about timings, keeping it simple. Okay, I, I get where he's coming from with that. There is a lot of trowels coming at the market. I mean, there's a trowel for every day of the week now, isn't there? And you see some plaster, about 18 of them. My garage is full, to be fair. But... For beginners, I do think it's good to have at least your base trowel, which is like your Marshall Town, your solid trowel, and then a flexi trowel. And that's only because the base trowels take so long to break in. You know, you could be on months and months on end with that trowel, trying to get it to the point where you can get a decent finish with your walls. 
you know, it's not worth the waiting time and it just ruin your finish. I had another guy who sent me an email saying he's trying to get good results, but his trowel just didn't up to the job. That's why the flexi trowels are that good because you give them a light sand down, get them on site for a day and they're ready to go and they're leaving an amazing finish. So I get where he's coming from, Lee Davis, I do get it. But, you know, you don't need every trowel for every day of the week, you are right. But I think a, a flexi trowel with a base trowel is is good because you're not waiting for that child to break in. So yeah, I kind of get it, but that's what my opinion is anyway. And by the way, I'm not perfect. I'm definitely not right on everything I say. I'm probably full of bollocks, but <laughs> anyway, it's one of them, innit? Let's find another one. And it says, do you throw your second coat on from the same mix or do you do a fresh mix between coats? I personally like to do most of the time a fresh mix. I just think you get a better finish. I think that the overall consistency and the overall end result is better for me. But I know a lot of people do it with the same mix. I used to do it with the same mix, actually. That's actually how I was taught in the beginning, to use it from the same mix from the bucket. And um, I know Gaz from Plastering Force, I think he uses the same mix. And, you know, correct me if I'm wrong now, I think he does. So a lot of people do it that way and a lot of people get good results. But I personally think it's better to do a fresh batch. It gives you more time, especially if you're starting out, if you are a beginner. It was so much more time to get the plaster on the wall and get it right rather than messing about, you know. So that's what I think. Um, that's what I think anyway. What else have we got? Oh, we've got a good one here. Full of crap about sponge floor plastering. That's that's fair enough. I mean, I, I'm probably he's probably right. <laughs> Who's to say he's wrong? I don't fucking know. Uh, what else have we got? Oh yeah, there was another one. Having watched a few videos about putting the second coat on, do you make a fresh batch of plaster? Or do you use what's in the bucket? Again, same answer, but I think it is just preference. You know, it's it's up to the user at the time. Everyone is different after all. It's Who's to say I'm right? But I think it's just at the beginning, probably start and mix up with a fresh bucket. It's, it's just easier. And... As you get into it, maybe then start using the same mix, but just see how it goes. So here's an interesting one. I did a little clip on using a half time for bonding. So basically it's an accelerator. So when you mix it with your bonding, it makes it go off faster. And um, some guys said, don't you just add dirty water? You can do. What I like to do is actually use the off, the off bit of water from dirty water from when I've been cleaning my bucket, plastering that. That's good for setting it off. Um, but another good way is to actually throw some cement in it. If you throw some cement in with the bonding, mix it up, and depending on how much you put in, it will go off like a rocket. But one, it makes it go off faster, but I find it also makes it a bit smoother to work with. So if you use cement with the bonding, I think that's a really good way of speeding it up, and it's probably a lot cheaper than using this half-time stuff. So give that a go, but don't put too much in, because it will go off like a rocket. Seriously, it really will. And I had one here from Aaron. I think this guy is probably starting plastering, probably brand new to the game. Um, he said, I know you said anyone can do it, but 99% of us are worried and lack the confidence to even try it for the fear of failure and making a big mess of the job. As a father to four kids, this is one skill I'd really like to learn. I'd love to see you work with newbies and show how quickly they pick this up for us to see their end result. Yep. Yeah. I get it. It is a very scary thing to start, especially if you've not had anyone there to help you or if you've never had, you know, the chance to try it out beforehand. But I'll be honest, the best thing to do is just pick up a trowel and start. It's all good fretting about it, but it's not like you're running cable into someone else's house and, you know, you're not going to cause that much damage. If you get it wrong, just do it on a little small patch of wall. Just start in a small area. Um, but the only thing that can really go wrong is you have to plaster it again. Do you know what I mean? If that is the worst thing that comes out of it, then it means that you get more experience you know, you've learnt your lessons, hopefully the second time you do it, you think, actually, I won't do it that way, or I won't throw cement in with a multi-finish. <laughs> I don't know, but I think the best, best thing to do is just to crack on with it. And I wrote an email in this. I write daily emails to my subscribers. If you do want to sign up to Plastering Beginners, by the way, perfect for anyone who wants to learn the art of plastering. We'll take it from start to finish. There's a link below this video. But I wrote an email on it. And I've just said that basically that's exactly what you got to do. you just got to get out there, give it a go, and learn from your mistakes. Because that is the best way to learn. Um, probably going to do one more, look for one more question. And then I don't know if to call it a day. 
like I said, it's brand new. So leave in your comments what you think about this video, by the way. Is it worth it? Is it any good? And uh, like I said, if William is watching, let us know how he gets on, because I want to hear about his eye. Let's see if he's all right. <laughs> Naturally, has anyone else had plaster in the eye? If you have, leave it in the comments below and let us know what happened to you. Uh, let's find one more and we'll carry on. Okay, so we got one here. I am eight. Bought one of these on a recce as a proper newbie DIY and I have to admit it's helped get a wide space level a lot easier than with a trowel. Talking about the speed skin by the way, I didn't really explain that, just went into it. <laughs> I've only just brought it, I know it already has the corners rounded off like you're covering one of your videos. But even with the rounded corners, I'm still getting a light line at the edge. Do you think I need to curve it more or lightly sand the, come on computer, corner down to the same level? Or is it me doing it because I'm new to plastering? What do you think? With the speed skins, when I first used it, I found that the corner that they had wasn't enough. So actually I cut a bit more of a radius on and made it a bit more of a curve. And it actually helped 10 times because the line stopped. I didn't have to trowel it out with my trowel, you know. So I actually do think with the speed skins, when you get one curve, try it first as it is, test it. But if it's still leaving lines, it, what it'll do when you're using it, it'll leave lines behind it. And it does take a bit of breaking time. The speed skim is like any trowel, it does need a bit of time to break in. But um, if it is doing that, just cut the edges off a bit more and I think you'll find better results. So that's that one. Um, and here's a good point actually. This is from Matthew Mella. This is a very good point. Hi, can I ask why I haven't put a scrim on the angle beads to stop any potential cracking in the future? You might have a point on this one. Do you know what I mean? I've never done that. But I suppose you put tape on the joints of corner, I mean a plasterboard, why wouldn't you do it on the screen, um, of angle beads? So I suppose, yeah, he's actually got a point. I don't know how much it would help, because if it's timber expanding and the beads hook to the timber, then it's going to pull away anyway. But, you know, it might make a difference. Who knows? So, actually, Matthew Mella, if I had a golden star, I'd probably give you one, because you've probably got a point there. <laughs> Because I can't answer that. Maybe I'll start doing it. And if anyone does know the answer, leave it in the comments below. Do you put um, scrim tape on your angle beads? Do you do it? I don't know. I was never taught, but maybe it's the right thing to do. But anyway, that is the end of the Q&A session. This is a very, very nice beer, by the way. I'm not sponsored by him, but it's bloody good. Especially after the gym. It just tastes like sugar. Um, thank you for watching. I don't know how this is going to go. I don't know if I'm going to do it again. Please leave your comments. Let us know if it was useful, if it's worth doing. And like I said, try to have a bit of fun with it instead of constantly doing tutorials all the time. Um, it's allowed me to have a beer whilst I sat down. The wife's out, so it's a good time for me to sit down and just have a bit of fun, I suppose. So let us know what you think. Leave it in your comments below. Like I said, if you are interested, if you are a beginner at plastering, click the link below. There's a welcome course. You're more than, uh, more than welcome to join. And... Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe. We have also do tutorials which cover actually how to plaster instead of talking. And uh, yeah, hopefully you learned a bit. Thanks a lot for watching. Blaine Gray, Plastering Beginners. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.